the cure or steps to take in order to overcome every besetting sin is number one, become born again. This is what is called laying aside every weight. This is giving your life to Jesus and taking the life of Jesus. It is laying aside your weight and taking the light yoke of Jesus. It is changing your mind and becoming accepted in the beloved. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, Come now, let us reason together. They said, The Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. He said, Though they be red like crimson, said, they shall be as wool. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Say, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Ye shall find rest for your souls. Say, For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Number two, we must renew our mind. You renew your mind by study of the Word of God and meditation on the same. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Say, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And this is why the heart must be renewed. Because Romans chapter 1 verse 28 to 32 says, Our mind became reprobate and must be totally changed for it to come alive even to God. Number three, you must look unto Jesus. In Romans chapter 12 verse 2, the Bible says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We look to Jesus even in the following ways. Number one, in his lifestyle. And this includes one, his prayer life. In Luke chapter 18 verse 1, the Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. In Mark chapter 1 verse 35, the Bible says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. The number two thing, in this light is in his dogged stand against evil and wickedness. In Luke chapter 13, verse 15 to 16, the Bible says, And the Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox and his axe from the store and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had borne lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? In Mark chapter 11, verse 15 to 17, the Bible says, and they, came, and they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seat of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he thought, saying unto them, Is it not written, my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. The next thing is in his yielding to the Holy Spirit. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. In John chapter 5, verse 30, the Bible says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which had sent me. The fourth is in his glorifying the Father. This particular quality is divided into two. Number one, in his obedience even to God. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, the Bible says, Let this man be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The second one is in his willingness to carry out the assignment of God. In John chapter 9 verse 4, the Bible says, I must walk the works of him that sent me in wise day. So the night cometh when no man can walk. 
In Matthew 26, verse 39, the Bible says, And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. I want us to realize something very vital. And that is that in carrying out God's assignment, people will offend you, betray you, and say all manner of campaigns of calumny against you. But the basic requirement is that you should forgive, even like Jesus. In Luke 23, verse 34a, the Bible says, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If Jesus forgave, you must forgive as well, except you have another standard you are following. Amen.